MMAWeekly.com here with uh, Shane Carwin, getting ready to head into the main event, UFC 131 with Junior Dos Santos. It's been a little while, Shane. Uh, how did it feel to uh, shift gears all of a sudden about two, three weeks ago? Uh, you know, Brock had to drop out of the fight with his diverticulitis issues. You know, you were already physically prepared because you're in training, but you had to shift from the undercard up right into the main event. Was that a much of a mental adjustment for you? Um, not too much because you know we were, we were, there were things that we needed to, to get accomplished in this uh, in this camp and and uh, really nothing changed. Uh, you know, uh, the camp has, has stayed the same, the practices and stuff. It's just uh, the strategies probably changed a little bit and. Um, you know, I'm just excited to get back in there. So, you know, it's uh, this is you know an, another one of those. This is my fourth fight in a row. You know, that's been with a, a top ten guy. You know, that, and uh, so uh, you know, just excited to get in there and be able to compete again. Now, talking about that, getting back in there, it's been almost a year since you were last in there when you last fought uh, Brock Lesnar. But Junior Dos Santos has been out about the same amount of time. He was. I think about a month shorter than you, so you're both coming off of about the same layoff. Not much advantage there, but it's a, a big difference in how you guys spent that layoff. He went into the Ultimate Fighter, filmed the reality show, and kind of did his normal training, and, and he's coming off of victories. You, you suffered the first loss of your career. You had surgery to fix some lingering issues with your neck and back, and you know, you've changed your diet up to, to deal with some issues. Your weight's down, I think you said about 25 pounds or so. I mean, how does that? How do you think that plays into this for you? Do you think maybe having to struggle with those things yeah. maybe keeps you sharper, and ha and coming off a of first loss of your career? Ah, uh, you know, it's just um, you know that loss. It taught me a lot of things. You know that I needed to, to take care of some things. So, uh, you know, we, you, always, you make those corrections after every fight to make yourself a better fighter. You know, uh, just yeah. to, so you can keep ahead of the pack. And um, you know, those are the things that we took care of. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I had to have surgery in my neck. Stenosis, and, um, you know that's taken care of now. With Fighters talk about you learn more from a loss than a win. I mean, that was the first loss you've ever faced. So does it now? Do you see that? Does it hold true for you? Uh, you know, I think I can always take something away from all my fights, and and uh, you know, and have something to work on. Um, probably just so happened that with the Brock fight, I probably did have a few more things that uh, I saw that I needed to work on. And, um, but I think from any fight, whether win or lose, you know, you have to walk away and, and know that there's things that you need to do to improve yourself. Do you feel like there's a, a lot of technical things that you learned over this, this layoff that you've helped improve, you know, as far as technique in your fighting game? Oh, always, you, you know, always learning technique. There's so many disciplines to learn. It's, uh, you know, hard, hard to be great at everything, and that's what you're always striving to do. How has uh, this change in diet done for you? I mean, you, you brought... <laughs> Um, Josh Ford in to help you with your diet and man you I mean you you look a lot thinner you know yeah. you don't look quite as beefy as you did you still look big and strong yeah. <laughs> don't know, get the, me wrong the but. strength and everything is, is still there you know I think the explosion uh, is more so you know working with coach uh, Lando uh, with strength conditioning and uh, obviously you know Josh Ford with uh, forced fuel you know they've gone to mostly an organic diet and, um, you know for the for the proteins and stuff is basically fish and chicken a lot more fish I'd say but um, you know it's it's done wonders for me and uh, you know I'm excited about it and it's you know honestly the, it's probably the best thing that uh, ever happened to me because uh, you know I think it's a lifelong change too for that so you know hopefully it adds a couple extra years to my life eating like this yeah, because when you came up in the game, I mean, you you were training partners for a long time with Ron Waterman and and some other guys who maybe were came from that bodybuilding kind of physique, and that doesn't always play well in the fight game. Yeah, not for not you know, it's uh, everybody you know tends to find out uh, you know what weight and, and where they fight best. And when I fought Christian Wallace, you know, I was yeah. at uh, you know 252 yeah. and in that fight and, and felt good. So. Uh, you know, I think anywhere around that weight is probably where I fight best. Do you feel like it maybe is even added to your power because of the quickness? Because you're uh, a little bit lighter? Or? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's what you, know, what, what you try to find is, is where your, your body operates optimally. You know, with, with uh, you know, speed, explosion, and strength, and, you know, all those things. And, uh, you know, you're always trying to fine-tune that and, and figure out, uh, you know, where you operate best. Has it made much difference for you, uh, the diet change outside the cage? 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I have more energy and, uh, you know, I just generally feel better. So. And you've got two little ones now, right? Yeah. I mean, your so daughter is what a little over a year old now, about a year yeah, and a half. Yeah, my son's ten, so. And your son's ten too. Yeah. Years. So I, I got to stick around for a while for those guys. So, you know, I, I think it's going to help. Uh, you know, not only with me but the the family as well. And it's something my wife has always preached. So, you know, I, I guess I had to get on board too. <laughs> now getting blasted into this main event next week with uh, with Junior Dos Santos. A lot of pressures come with that main event. You know, I I know that. Um, you've had a lot of press coming after you, and I, and I really appreciate you taking the time with us today. I know you've had a lot of demands on your time, and you've done this uh, Bud Light webisode. You know, you've mm -hmm. done that. Yeah. I think seven part series uh, with them, it's, it's or more five, than that, yeah. more than seven. Yeah, yeah. So you got this thing with Bud Light. A lot of new stuff. I mean, how does that? Do you? How do you focus on the fight with all that going on? Is it? Uh, is well, it know, just, just something you've learned yeah. to deal with? Yeah, you know, I think over time it's something that you learn to learn to deal with, and uh, you know, most of the time that uh, uh, those guys that you know they don't bother you, they just kind of hang on the side and you do your thing, and you know, I don't pay any attention to them. So, um, you know, everything is the same. You know, I think the the Brock fight helped you know prepare me for a lot. You know, when uh, you're fighting that guy, that's he brings in millions of viewers, and uh, you know that's when you know there there seemed to be a, a lot of press, and even with the the Frank Mir fight. So you know it's just kind of the norm now, and uh, you know, I just look forward to being able to step into the octagon, and all this is is part of that. Now you're back in this one's a big fight. I mean, it puts you right back in title contention if you win. You're fighting, you know, the number one contender. How does it feel to get thrown right back into that mix now that uh, you know you weren't expecting to when you when you were scheduled to fight uh, John Inamo? So you know you went from fighting a guy who's making his UFC debut into getting that opportunity to maybe get right back into the title shot. Yeah, it's an it's an exciting. Uh, you know, it's this is a, a dream. You know, a, you get very few chances like this in life, and uh, you know we'll go in there and make the most of it, have fun with it, and uh, you know. I feel fortunate and blessed that uh, I'm in the position that I'm at. And say you do get through this, or, or whether you don't get through this fight with Junior Dos Santos, is Lesnar a fight you still want to have when he's able to come back and fight again? Is that a fight you'd like to go back and try again? Absolutely. You know, uh, oh, I, I want to compete with the best, and you know, I feel like Brock's right up there, and uh, you know, I, I wish the best for him and his recovery, and you know, first and foremost for his family. You know, for him to be there with them, but uh, you know, absolutely, I hope that uh, he's able to come back and compete, and we get the chance to meet again. All right. Well, Shane Carwin, thanks for talking to us at MMA Weekly, and good luck next week, UFC 131. Shane Carwin versus Junior Dos Santos, Vancouver. Check it out, fans. Thanks.